Today on episode 43 of It Would Seem As Though, we are going to talk about sex work. But, as you well know, tangents are topics, so who knows where we will go today. So stick around and get ready for another episode of It Would Seem As Though. It would seem as though. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we are back for another episode of It Would Seem As Though, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing. <sighs> and nothing. Mostly nothing. I'm talking about nothing this time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so the reason Annika is laughing and wanting to kill me at the yeah. same time is because we just talked for, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes probably. Yeah. And we weren't recording. <laughs> and so I just looked up and I'm like, oh, I should check the time. Jesus 22 seconds? Oh what? I started the thing and then, I don't know, when I was over here beating my mouse on the table to make it work, I might have stopped the thing. I don't know what happened. Honestly, this is why probably we need to have someone else make the show. We just talk. <laughs> Honestly? Because... I'm not the... I'm not the <laughs> But I'm sorry, but here we are again, and I'm, we're going to try to go back and talk about what we talked about, because we had some good stuff going yeah, on. Girl. And Sorry, y'all missed it. Thank you, bye. I know, have a good time. <laughs> I'm going to go back to bed. Uh, what did you start uh, with? There was, uh, there was things we started with, because we have a topic today. Our we to- do have a topic Our today. topic is sex work, and we'll get to that, but there were other things we spoke well, what about. Well, I talked about... First, I was talking about how um, in the... Uh, world of white people being mad. Oh, right, 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 right. right. How um, I had forgot to mention that when they remade Lady and the Tramp into a live right. action movie, that it was a biracial couple. Yeah, because so, the post racial world. Right? In a post racial mm-hmm. world, which I didn't really understand the meaning of that. I now understand it, but mm. it was like the whole idea is these people are set in the time of the original movie, which is the 1800s, in some little Midwestern town. Girl. And. All the people, white and black, love each other, get yeah. along great. It's a good time. And they, you know, live in equality mm-hmm. and peace in her. I was like, what world is this? That would have been beautiful and wonderful and fantastical. But good God, let's rewrite history. And I'm not that I'm saying you should make it a big struggle for this couple, but it was illegal to have <laughs> interracial marriage. <laughs> so That's the tea right but, there. I, but at that, you know, aside from that, uh, I just imagine... That the white people watching that were like, wait a minute, darling in this movie is black? Yeah, sure. And her auntie who comes with the horrible Siamese cats is also black. And she goes into the local sure. store and they just are like, hey, how you doing? Hey, girl. Come on in. Let's mm-hmm. do some shopping. Weird. Yeah, right? And well, we- what's funny is I bet the same people who are shook about her being black mm-hmm. were not at all shook about this whole uh, fantasized reality of... You know, the black people and the white people getting along so well and, you know, living together in peace and harmony. Mm -hmm. Because that's the lie they want to tell. Yeah. You know, in the whole, uh, we can't teach critical race theory because it might upset someone. They want to tell the lie (laughs) that it was like, it it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. It's so weird to me. That is so weird to me, not wanting to teach. It's just like history, right? And like, that's... Because this is, like, all that I study. All I study is history and society from the perspective of people who are non-white or men. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Are we recording? Did we you just double check to make sure that we're Shut fucking up. recording? We're recording. You stupid old bitch. I swear to God. <laughs> um, I am so very sorry. Yeah. I, I, I will literally? forfeit my pay for this week. <laughs> will you? I will, so, get the out. zero dollars that I make this week, get out. I will donate to charity. I'm sick of you. Um... But anyway, it is interesting, like, in just being white Americans, being just so ashamed of our history that we just don't want it taught in schools, but that's not the, but the history that is taught is just so stupid and wrong. It's exhausting and whitewashed. And I think that's where all of this stems from, right? We just whitewash history and make Europeans and white people seem like they've done everything and the only good things ever to be, you know, applauded for. And now white people just, not now, just forever white people playing every other character when that character maybe shouldn't have been a white person right and that uh that too was a thing and i watched on tiktok 
this woman talking specifically about uh, all the people with their panties in a bunch about Ariel being black is that there are so many roles who should have been played by black actors yes. or should have been played by actors of color, of color yeah. who were played by white people. Specifically, uh, Yul Brynner in The King and I, uh, the king right. of Thailand. Mm-hmm. What year was, was that? Was not a white man. Uh, late 50s, I okay. think. Because was it? Because I was going to ask last time. Well, last time we did this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mean 10 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah girl. Yeah. Um, was it Anna and the King or the King and I? Well, so Chow the King Yun-Fai? and I, that, yes, that's Anna and the King. Are they, the, Anna are and they the different King, stories? They're the same story. Okay. Anna and the King is what the King and I is based on. So Anna and the King is a book okay. about oh, okay, okay, okay. the King of Siam, okay. which is now modern day Vietnam. Yep. And how he... Here's the other thing I learned watching this list, though, is that the woman that he brings in to teach his children is of mixed race. She's not a white lady from England. Oh, shit. Okay. And so that whole thing was also whitewashed. And this is based on a true story. Now, something I found out when the movie Anna and the King came out with... Was it, was, wasn't it Jodie Foster? Chow Young Fat and Jodie Foster? I, I, I think. Maybe. Anyway, Let's it's say, super good. Me, yeah. So they wanted it's to go really over to Vietnam now. to film it. And the government of Vietnam said, no, I'm Nor. sorry, but the last time y'all told our story, mm-hmm. you told it in such an offensive way that we want no part of this because they made the king look like an imbecile, mm. you know, and they also uh, made their culture, Jeez. you know, made fun of their culture, yeah. uh, whatever. And so they were like, absolutely, no, you cannot... Uh. Uh, what? Um, Tom Felton, who plays Draco Malfoy, yes. was the son. Was um, Jodie Foster's son. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Snaps. So that was before we knew who he was. So. I know. A little teeny tiny Tom little Felton. Little baby boy. Um, but they were like, absolutely not. You cannot film that here. No, we hate And you. so the, I don't remember where they filmed it, but the government was much happier with that telling of the story. Oh, I bet. Because one, it makes him look like the innovative man that he was, because he really was a smart man. But it also... Chow, the Sorry, the king? The, yeah, the king. I'm like Chow Yun-Fat, the king of Siam. Yeah, Chow Yun-Fat, who was just taught, but, you know, he played a smart king in this movie. Yeah. But there's also, uh, you know, as we talked about before, uh, John Wayne... Like oh, Genghis Khan. Khan. Or Genghis Khan. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I'm not sure really which way is proper. I went to a museum when I was in Montana and um, Museum of the Rockies. Uh-huh. And there was a whole exhibit of Genghis Khan. But that's just how and people said it. And that's how the it. white people in Montana That's how they said, said it. It's Genghis Khan. So okay. that's how I've heard it. But I don't know things, girl. What am I supposed I know. to know? I'm a, just a dumb white girl. But uh, Emma Stone... In the movie, isn't the movie called Hawaii or Aloha or something? I don't know. But she's playing a biracial Asian woman. Mm. And Emma Stone is, you know, the color of Elmer's glue. Okay, but wait, why did I say that Emma Stone is the person who says, I'm white presenting because one of my parents is white and my other parent is also white. (laughs) Did she actually say that? No, but that's just like, (laughs) that's how I picture it going. Because she understands what to be bi- to be biracial. One parent yeah. is English and the other one's like Swedish. You know oh. what I mean? My one parent is Elmer's glow and my <laughs> other parent is flower eight by ten paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole idea, of course, is that throughout history and even in modern times, mm-hmm. there are all these roles where white actors are playing roles of people of color that are actual people. Okay, Not yeah. just, you know, and one of the ones that was particularly problematic was in Breakfast at Tiffany's, uh, uh, yeah. Mickey Rooney mm-hmm. playing an Asian man in the most offensive stereotypical trope of an Asian man. Yeah, and like, which, and I love that movie. I think that movie's fantastic. I think the novella's really cute, but I love that movie. And I think Audrey Hepburn, I see I knew her name this time, um... Was, I think she was darling and ditzy and silly, but everyone, like, loved her. Or that's how I... When I watched it, I thought everyone thought she was, like, silly and stupid, but liked her. And I was yeah. like, what a dream. Um, but that character, Mickey Rooney's character, is so fucking cringy. It is so painful to watch with his bad tan and his, you know, like, shoe polish eyebrows and hairline. Well, right, and the big, thick, goggle-like glasses mm-hmm. where his eyes look like they're going to pop out through the lenses. Uh, one I of know. the other ones that has... It makes me sad because I loved this movie as a child, but I also didn't know better. But 
as I watched it as an adult, all I could do was sit there kind of and cringe with my head down is the seven faces of Dr. Lau. Um, Because I grew up loving that movie. But again, Tony Randall as an Asian man who speaks with the very typical kind of, I think, American idea of what an Asian accent is. Yeah. You know, because generic Asian accent. It could be anybody from anywhere in any Asian country. Yes. You know, fill in the blank here. Where are you from? Okay, Asia. we'll still speak like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, at one point, he's also just a white guy. Yeah. But through most of the movie, he's this Asian Well, character. right. And he, like, morphs, right? He's a mighty morph from Power Ranger. But what I well, think is... he's magical. He's magical. And, but... It's every movie, too. It's, like, not every, but so many movies. Because I, you know, one of my things, one of my one of my things that I love so, so much is, like, folklore and mythology. And so I've seen a lot of, you know, movies based around Greek mythology. So, like, Jason the Argonauts and, like, uh, other ones. I can't think. Right. Movies. Um, but every character is white. I'm sorry, Maggie Smith was a Greek goddess in, like, Jason the Argonauts or Clash of the Titans. One of them, I can't remember. Yeah. But she was a fucking Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith, who I adore. Also white presenting. But is <laughs> white presenting because one of her parents is British and the other one's Scottish. But, I mean, I love the movie, but I'm still, like, all these white people. And let me tell you something. Yeah. I have a, I have a feeling that, like, people of ancient Greece didn't, look like modern day Caucasian people. Do you so mean? They weren't redheads? <laughs> no, they weren't redheads with British accents. <laughs> That's weird. So well, was... one of the other ones was Jake Gyllenhaal as the Prince of Persia. Right. Because he looks so Persian. He's Persian. And they didn't even do anything. They didn't like darken his hair. No. I mean, thank God they didn't darken his skin. Praise but, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, and one of the funny things that the woman said was, and every single movie ever with Jesus in it. Mm-hmm. Every movie. They're all white Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's like, and let's face it, he lived in the Middle East, Mm -hmm. in the desert. Yeah. Not a white man. No. And let me tell you, there are parts of like, so again, because I know this is off topic and not literally what we're talking about, but because um, I love what I just said, I loved mythology and folklore. I've read like some of the Apocrypha of the Bible, things that are like taken out, different books and such. And they talk about pe- be- there are beings, there are these other people who are like tall and white and kind of glow, but they consider them to be like angels. You know what I mean? They don't think that they're right. human. Right. And no one's described as being white, you know? So it's really interesting to me that we got to like white Americanize Jesus. Yeah. One of the other ones that this woman didn't mention in this list of uh, white people playing non white characters was. One is uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier playing Othello. Mm. I mean, come on. Shakespeare gave us one black character. <laughs> and it was one. Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> and it was like, and you couldn't have it played by a black actor because there were no black actors then, of course. Yeah. Now, none. You could. Blah, 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 blah. They could find none. <laughs> I know. Well, I need you to stop. I know that we've already done this. It. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So white actors playing people of color, stupid, ignorant. I hate every minute of it. Um, and then people are weird about things like, uh, what is that? What is that show called? It's like, mm, mm. Mm, I don't know. You have to give me some kind of clue. It's like, uh, okay, it seems like it'd be like Downton Abbey, but it's like very multicultural cast, and it's on. Oh my god, it's on Netflix. There's like a couple seasons. Everyone was like raving about it, but it's like very multicultural. Very... Oh, Bridgerton. That's it. <laughs> Do you like how I'm like Down Nabby, but with it's like Down multicultural? Nabby with, but, but with, with brown people. people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that, like that, I remember people being like, what is this? You know? Well, and one of the things that people took uh, umbrage with was that the queen is of mixed race. Well, Mm. She was mm-hmm. of mixed race. I and know. so, um, but people are like assuming because the, the queen that they know, they think they just assume she's white yeah. because she's British. Right. And it's like, no, no, no. Isn't that, it? okay, I know this is again off topic, but I always think that is super, super interesting because believing that a monarch is that, like, uh, that region, from that region, is that ethnicity or whatever because they're a monarch of that place. One of the most famous is Cleopatra, that everyone said that she was Egyptian. And that was another one on the list, yeah. played by Elizabeth Taylor. I know, and I want you to know that I know that's problematic, but Elizabeth Taylor, 
she's so beautiful that it hurts my fucking feelings. Yeah. And I know it's problematic, girl. I've right. never seen it. But everybody in that movie's white. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and then uh, Charlton Heston mm-hmm. and Yul Brynner in The Ten Commandments. That's fine. What? So, they're, well, because, you know. They're fine. The king of Egypt. Yeah, yeah, It's regular, and he's supposed to be white. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I don't know. I just think that, well... Hopefully we'll do better at some point. I mean, slowly but surely. Look, Disney's like, here, we're going to make everyone black. <laughs> Disney's like, right. we're going to integrate everything. Everything's multicultural now. We don't even like white people. Right. You know? Well, the new movie coming out, it comes out the day before Thanksgiving, I believe. Okay. Uh, is called, I think it's called Strange, new, Strange World. Strange World. And it is an animated feature that's this family crash lands on some weird planet that they don't... But the family Mm -hmm. is very multicultural. Love it. And I'm all, yes, Disney. Thank you, Disney. Well, thanks for finally waking up and smelling Mm -hmm. the coffee and going. But I mean, Disney has been doing, I mean, for a while they did doing it. In the 90s, they were doing the colorblind casting. And then they got away from that and got back to the, I guess everybody needs to be white. Mm -hmm. And now they're back to the, but it's not so much, because like in the Brandy version of Cinderella. Oh my God, yes. Uh, So Brandy... Clearly, is black girl. What? Her mother, her stepmother. Is Bernadette is Peters. Is Bernadette Peters. <laughs> and her two stepsisters. So both children are Bernadette Peters. Uh-huh. One is white. And one is black. And one is black. Yep. I love this movie. The prince... Is Asian. Is Asian. Mm-hmm. And his parents are Whoopi Goldberg and Victor Gerber. So... Who are black and white. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I <laughs> am not a geneticist, but I'm pretty certain a black you don't woman... Know. You don't know. And a white man will not be an Asian son. You don't know. Um, oh, and then Whitney Houston is the fairy godmother. I know. Now, I wished when they did the new version of Cinderella mm-hmm. with uh, Camilla Cameo that they would have made uh, Billy Porter's fairy godmother as dramatic and as much of a the part of the movie as the Whitney Houston one. I realize they're different movies. Yeah. Because this is a new retelling, blah, blah, blah. But Billy Porter, come on. Honestly, he was only in it for 30 seconds. Also, I wish, I hope that that sound mixer got fired because Camila Cabello throughout the entirety of the goddamn movie sounded like an idiot. I think that her voice sounded terrible. I don't think any of her songs were good. I feel like she sounded stupid. And I feel like that was the, the person who mixes the sound. That was like their job to help her out. And they just let her sound dumb. And I think I would have So how them. do you really feel about that movie? Because I'm not sure. You're and, being so vague. And do you know what, though? I thought the movie was great, but literally any time Camilla <laughs> So any time the star of the movie's in the film, you're all, Anytime boo, boo. Boo. came on and sang, I'd be all mute. Because it was, it was like, <laughs> you're watching it like <laughs> silent movie. Like, what are you doing? Like, it just wasn't, it wasn't good. And well, she can sing, so it was disappointing. She's an okay singer. She's fine. She's not a great singer. Well, she's not great, but like, she can sing better than what they did, portrayed her as No, wasn't Cinderella. her stepmother played by Adina Menzel? Yes, she was. And you're going to make Cinderella sound like garbled trash, and then you're going to have a fucking Broadway movie TV star fucking Adina Menzel come out and like, belt it the fuck out, and you're going to think, this is fine. And yeah. Billy Porter... Regular. This is good. We're doing. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. Again, clearly you have no strong feelings mm-hmm. about this movie. Yep. All right. Not at all. I don't like movies. Anyway. All right. Um, briefly, before we get to our actual topic, I'm right. going to jump to the topic of the dirtbag that is Mark Zuckerberg. Because on the mm. on the Twitter feed today, I right literally before he got here, it popped up in the Twitter feed. And I'm not really a Twitterer. I don't, as Kathy Griffinly said, I don't twat out anything. <laughs> you twat out a lot, bitch. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it said that he was laying off 11,000 employees. Oh, Happy right. holidays. Happy yeah. holidays to you. Because they're, get the fuck out of my business. Because their stock was tanking and whatever. And the best way, of course, to get it back up is to fire 13% of your workforce. Mm-hmm. And I'm all. Well, that's going to make for a lovely holiday for all these folks. Great. Yeah, whatever. I love that. But, you know, the other thing, you know, Twitter is I have to deactivate my Twitter account because it's stupid Elon Musk is now running Twitter. And the day after he took over and announced that it's all about freedom of speech and he got rid of the board of directors and all the people who make decisions of what you can and cannot post... The use of the N-word went up 500%. Mm. Love that. 500. Love that. Good for them. Because white people are just like, oh, I'm just itching to say that word. I need to say that word. No, you don't. 
I that mean, word should never leave your mouth for any reason. Uh, if, I want you to know something that I didn't say this last time, but I want to talk about disrespect for a second. <laughs> um, it makes me crazy because very much you know who I am as a person that if I'm, I can't, I can't be around like so much disrespect or hate, bigotry, racism. Like I will, I will say something to somebody, right? Well, of course. And so it makes me crazy when people act more uncomfortable uh, with my reaction or my retaliation um, of being disrespected instead of the disrespect itself. Like, what the fuck? Like, why? And people say things like, don't let it get to you, or don't sink to their level, or um, you're above this. Bitch, no, I'm not. What do you mean I'm above it? Like, this is girl, this is eye level for me, First girl. of all, though, on any other... You petty. Mm, bitch, I'm petty. Because, because you thing. come from me and I'm mm, petty. Girl. I'm petty as Petty hell. as fuck. Hi, I'm petty manias, bitch. I'm petty <laughs> as fuck. I'm... I'm Lori Petty. Girl, I'm Tom Petty. I'm all I'm the, pe- Rich, I'm the, I'm all the petties. Of bitch. Exactly. But, like, this is my eye level. Like, this is my baseline for me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not acting out of character because this is my character. Like, I will always be all levels, you know? Like, I'm not... I will say what I need to but say. But it is funny to me that it makes other people uncomfortable for you to call out someone who just was openly racist. Or disrespectful. Like, yeah. I just think... And that's the thing, too, is, like, you want to say shit that is stupid or disrespectful or out of pocket, and you want to fuck around, and you find out, and then you're shocked when you find out that I'm mean? Like, that's stupid to me. Like, maybe don't be ignorant. And well, first of all, who doesn't know you're mean? I mean, honestly, like, mean girls for the win, though. I, my whole <laughs> life is based around being mean. But I just don't, it, it's interesting to me. But I, I am first and foremost disrespectful. I don't care who you are. I think that I am kind, and I am civil, and I am nice. But here's the thing. Miss Ma'am, if you bring bullshit to me, I will catapult bullshit right back at you. And I don't care who you are. I don't care who the fuck you are. I don't care no. how old you are. I don't care if you have some like title over me. No, you don't be disrespectful to me. You don't be disrespectful to people. You know? And that's I think that's that's it. Like I think we've given too many people too much respect for their bullshit behavior. And I think that to me, it, accountability is more important. Agreed. Being uncomfortable and growing from being called out for being a dumb bitch that's more important to me than like playing nice being civil to everyone is such bullshit to me I don't have time for everyone's civility Ugh. no civility doesn't interest me no so, I mean civility if it's just part of like I'm being kind to people yeah sure but if you're yeah. being kind when kindness is not called for mm-hmm. no Mm-mm. no 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 and listen I have been called out um, by friends for saying things that were not appropriate which I didn't realize were inappropriate right and then I was like of course I was uncomfortable and felt bad and felt weird. And then it was like, but I learned from it. I was just like, oh God, I, wow. And I perseverate on that kind of shit for yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, like you do. I was like, oh my God, I said this thing and uh, was ignorant and stupid and I didn't know. And then I learned because why? I sat in my discomfort mm-hmm. and was like, okay. And it, I think the part, and I know we've talked about this many, many times, the part that many people get wrong is... Okay, I'm going to apologize to you because I said something stupid mm-hmm. after you point out to me that it's stupid. Yep. And then I'm waiting for you to make me feel better about it. No. No. No, that's no one else's job to make no. you feel better. And the other night I went to see uh, my good friend Poison Waters uh, in her one-woman show at Darcells, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And one of the things she said that I just really love, and I've always, I felt this way but I've never actually put it into words, was she said, she was talking about how she is this positive, upbeat character who loves... People, she loves to go on stage, she loves to do her job, and she goes, but if what I say on stage makes you feel some kind of way, mm-hmm. I am not responsible mm-hmm. for how you feel. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, that is so right. Mm-hmm. Because when people say, well, you made me feel, I can't make you feel mm-hmm. anything. The words I said affected you in a way that you chose to feel this way. Yeah. I can't make you feel any kind of way. Nope. And I am not responsible for how you feel. I'm not also just not responsible <laughs> for making you comfortable. No. And so it's like, yeah, and sorry about it. And here's a couple things. If you're uncomfortable, lean into it. Why are you uncomfortable? But also, I think if what I say makes you feel some type of way, it's not my responsibility. That goes hand in hand with it's not my business what other people think of me. Right. It's none of my business what you think of me, bitch. I don't care. And I don't care. No. I know. I was talking to one of my friends the other day, and she was saying that that is one of her issues, is she still, like, if somebody even looks at her in a kind of sideways glance... 
then she's like, oh my god, what did I do? Did I upset them? Did I Who was offend this? I'm them? sorry. Uh, one of my friends. Got it, okay. Uh, and one of the things I said to her is I said, I really love the little piece of uh, wisdom that I got from RuPaul, which is, what other people think of me is none of my business. Yeah. And I cannot run my day. Mm-mm. Now, if somebody I love and care for has clearly had some issue with me, is mad at me about something, yeah. I'm going to figure out why. Different. And try to get to the Different. bottom of that. But if somebody on the street gives me the side of, oh, I don't care. I can't even care Mm-mm. a little bit. Mm-mm. But it's like, I'm not going to see you again, mm-hmm. and I'm probably going to say some shit to you for giving me the side. I was hey. like, what's your problem? Yeah. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You don't mean anything to me. Knock if you buck, bitch. <laughs> We're going to exactly. twirl. We're going to fuck it. Well, fuck you up right here. Um, no, yeah, I just... So that's the whole thing about how I feel about disrespect and um, people being crazy and stupid and acting out. Like, I don't... Look, don't bring me your bullshit. And you won't find out. You know what I mean? And if you haven't seen me act that way, if you haven't seen that side of us, I feel like then you haven't activated it. Congratulations. I think that uh, you should just always have on a little button on you that says, fuck around and find out. Because, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. by the way, I love that phrase. Yeah, right? Because Same. it's just so like, yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. And you know what? The- or the other one that I really love is um, play stupid games and win stupid prizes. Girl. <clears throat> Let me tell you. Every day. I feel like that. I feel like, who's winning today? You know what I mean? <laughs> what kind of stupid prize are you going to win today? Because mm-hmm. clearly you're you're trying to get one. Uh, every day of my life I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our actual topic today... Sex is, work. Yeah, mm-hmm. is sex work. Sexy time work. Um, and you are going to... Uh, define it. Define us. it for Yeah, me. and like so... Well, just for me. Just for you. Not for anyone else. No. Just me. Cause yeah, because everyone else probably knows. Dumb as a box of rocks. Um, so we talked about sex work in... Um, sex work is everything... From stripping, and you questioned me. I did question you only because I didn't know that. And because back in the day when I was uh, less educated, I would often say that so-and-so, who I knew for a fact was uh, a stripper or exotic dancer, I would say, well, she's a prostitute or whatever. And they was like, well, she's a stripper. I go, same thing. And I realized... You yeah, know, my own error, and it's like I was being judgmental and stupid. Ooh, you, I know it's hard to believe. Wait, well, wait, 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 wait! You're being judgmental. I'm always judgmental, but I was judgmental and stupid. Oh, that's so the problem. Still judgmental. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm but. not going to ever be like, oh, I'm not a judge. <laughs> I am judgy McJudge. I am, Ugh. you know, every judge. Mm-hmm. I'm judge jury. Let me tell you, I. Ooh, but anyway, what? I'm sorry. Back to you and your. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So stripping. And uh, is sex work. Having an OnlyFans, if you don't know what an OnlyFans is, look it up. It's not that complicated. But having that where you're selling pictures and videos of you doing adult things is sex work. Having a sugar daddy relationship where someone is paying you (laughs) to be their date, girlfriend, sex partner, whatever. Um, Prostitution, which is not the term that we should use. They would be a sex worker or a sex professional where you're selling your body and your sex services for money or profit. Um, having any site where you sell videos, pictures, chatting, phone sex operating, all of that. Selling your hair clippings, your armpit hair clippings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your toenail, no, no, your no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm fine with, and I mean, you do it, you do you, boo-boo. But the idea, and it's like, if I had, you know, lovely feet, mm. I wouldn't care about taking pictures of my feet and having people, but I don't care. Whatever. But the idea of selling parts of my body, not for sex, but like selling nail clippings and hair clippings, whatever, that just screams to me that someone's going to do some kind of witchcraft and wizardry or voodoo on. No, 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 no. And I had a Mm -hmm. client years ago who uh, was indigenous and told me that he needed all of his hair back Mm -hmm. because his personal belief system in his tribe and whatever was you don't leave parts of yourself behind with people you don't know because you don't know what they're going to do with it yeah and i was going to say something last time you said this it's it's a common thing within a lot of indigenous communities and not just in like turtle island which is north america but also like um in polynesia micronesia melanesia so in all the places in oceania um so hawaii and samoa tongan people oftentimes Having long hair is, um, like, signifies, like, their strength. It, same thing yeah. with indigenous people of North America. But it, um, they're, when someone passes in the family, usually it's an elder, 
there's like a ceremony of cutting of the hair. And all, depending, sometimes they cut their hair off, sometimes they just take a trimming of it. That hair is either like buried or burnt or a ritual happens with the yeah. hair. So it goes with, it's it's an offering and an honoring of that person who's passed. But yeah, so yes, I, I think it's um, <clears throat> interesting. But there's also, <clears throat> this is a little kinky, but you know, uh, people who like to like spit in each other's mouths Ugh. sexually. But listen, yeah. <clears throat> Everyone in like the witchcraft community is like, uh, don't, don't, don't do that. Like you're not supposed to do that. Like giving someone your hair or anything like that is like, and like spitting in someone's mouth. It's like soul bonding. Like witchcraft communities believe it. Yeah. So things like that with the, the giving of parts of your, your person, it's very, it's very weird to me, but people are making a profit on it. So. I just, my whole thing, again, just stems back to the witchcraft and wizardry of it all. I don't want anybody else to have any parts of my body. Mm-hmm. I mean... Weird. If it was just literally selling my body mm-hmm. for sex, that's one thing. But giving you pieces to keep... Is no, weird, right? No. I, don't think, I think that's weird. No. Mm-hmm. Well, it's but, like... And I know that there was... I've also seen things where people, like, wear someone else's vial of blood yeah. around their neck. It's like... I mean... No. <laughs> no. I'm all... And well. I, you know, and again, it's I can only speak for me and what I'm uncomfortable with. What? You do you. I mean, y'all grown folk. You right. do. But I, uh, one of the things I thought was really funny is the other day when I was coming home from school and my children were, it's one of the, I don't remember, and they're 12 and 14, talked about um, taking pictures of feet. And I was like, wait, what? How, wait, do, you, no. how do you know it, about uh, this? Hump the brakes. And they were like, uh, well, you know, watching YouTube. Because we're in blah, middle blah, school. Because we're in middle school. <laughs> But the whole idea right now is mm-hmm. it is so trendy. It's weird, right? To Isn't take pictures so of your feet weird. and sell them. Like, I, okay, I remember that being a thing. I remember hearing about it when I was younger, right? And like, it was Fun weird. fetishes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now that it's like so widespread, girl, and it's like literally everywhere, like, buy your feet pics here. Like, right. 7-Eleven is selling them by the dozen or something. <laughs> like, it just well, feels strange. I remember when I was younger, um, hearing about people having foot fetishes. Yeah. But usually it was like, this you know dainty little feet in high heels mm-hmm. and the higher Stockings, the better yeah and like the ones you couldn't even walk in yeah yeah yeah. you know but now it's like very different it like, is very like i told you because you said what did you say like oh if you had pretty feet you would do it and i was like girl people people mm-hmm. say like you right, got calluses have, you missing a toe i have fred sellstone feet mm-hmm. so sell those pictures don't nobody want pictures of but somebody but probably somebody does. does yeah an old lady with, with <laughs> big puffy feet and you know what they <laughs> love it <laughs> Somebody would. It. Somebody it's, would. Yeah. I know. It's so crazy. Um, in the topic of sex work, yeah. one of the th- things I wanted to talk about is there was a man in Hollywood. A man. A man. His name was Scotty Bowers. Okay. Now, if you don't know who Scotty Bowers is, Google him. No. Because he uh, he was called The Fixer. Here Scotty right. Bowers um, worked at a gas station mm-hmm. on Hollywood Boulevard. And oh my God, he was just, you know, like Mr. Gas Station Man Mr. until Gas one man. day this very handsome young actor mm-hmm. came in and asked him if he could uh, basically take the rest of the day off to spend it with him. Oh my God. And Scotty, who was Scotty um, didn't know. typically a straight man. Like but he are. was also a capitalist. Right. And he was all... He's an equal opportunist. He was an equal opportunity money maker. He was like, oh, I can make some money by spending the day with this very famous man who can't let anybody know he's gay. Perf. And so he... <laughs> Sounds ideal. Figured out pretty quickly that this could be a really thriving business for him. So his business was selling sex mm-hmm. out of this gas station. Okay. So we had a whole... This teeny tiny little gas station. Oh my god. Had a whole crew of people that worked there, and hardly any of them pumped gas. I'm about that. Because, that is so and they cute. had the like little trailer out back for the people who wanted, you know, to work on site. And mm-hmm. then there were people that they would, you know, car would pull up and be like, "I need cute boy," <laughs> and it was like women and men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and Scotty was one of the ones who was like. Though he was kind of a pimp, mm-hmm. he also did the sex work himself yeah. because it was like he was very famous for um, having a very big dick. No, oh my yes. God. And so, but And for being, he was apparently a super nice guy. Mm. Everybody liked him. Yeah. Everybody in Hollywood liked him because one, he was discreet, mm. but he was also super honest and super likable. Wow. And okay. so people were like, yeah, go to him. A likable hooker. Right. Well, so... 
10 years, no, not quite, yeah, 10 years ago, he wrote a book, or he co-wrote a book, and the book was called Full Service, My Adventures in Hollywood and the Secret Sex Lives of the Stars. Oh and it was basically him Scandalous. Uh, kind of talking about all of the celebrities who had come through there. Yeah. And it was, like, again, sometimes it was for straight sex, sometimes it was for gay sex, but most commonly it was for gay sex. It was yeah. men and men. Gross. But he also had women and women. Yeah. You know, Do whatever. It. Fuck it and up. some of the people who came through there, uh, I thought were kind of surprising because he had, he named names mm. and he said he waited until they were all dead. Love that. Because it's like, he can't hurt them. They're all dead. Mm-hmm. And who cares now? Yeah. You know, and one of, some of them I was all, mm, yeah, that makes sure. sense. Like Marlon Brando. Oh. And I had heard before that Marlon Brando was kind of an any thing. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't care. Again, Men, equal women, opportunist. Probably llamas, I don't know. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> but he, uh, one of the people he hooked up with that surprised me, mm-hmm. Richard Pryor. Oh my God. Oh, okay. I was like, Richard Pryor, because he, straight man, allegedly, mm-hmm. but his his daughter had said, oh no, 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 his daughter, excuse me, his ex-wife said that he was a big whore. Who was he, his ex-wife? Ri- huh? Who was his ex-wife? I don't remember her name, but she had claimed that Richard Pryor was a big whore and Well, there's also a rumor that he used to uh, put cocaine on his member so it would numb his dick yeah so, so it can... sex have yeah. sex longer yeah um but then there was like the people who everybody knew was gay like rock hudson and Ted yeah. hunter and whatever but some of the ones that surprised me and <clears throat> younger folks listening will be like i don't even know who these people are yeah young but folks. like vincent price oh my god that doesn't surprise me honestly uh it kind of surprised really? me really uh, i don't know why cary grant okay now i knew that cary grant like to wear women's panties. Okay. But usually was with he liked women, but he also sometimes liked to be with men. Sure. I'm okay. like, whatever. Uh Catherine Hepburn, I knew. I mean not shocking. Not shocking. Uh-uh. Uh one of the ones apparently that did shock people when this book came out was Janet Gaynor, which you'd have to be older to even know who she is, but she okay, was yeah, like actress in the thirties and forties. But this like wholesome middle America apple pie kind of girl okay and when her career was basically over she actually told people that you know she was a lesbian and people were like a lesbian what's you know what's that because it was so unheard of at that point for people to even talk about it yeah you know but like i said this guy named names and tell everybody's business and whatever now uh last year year before What's his name? Ryan Murphy mm. did a show, and I think it was, I think it was just called Hollywood. Okay. Was it? I don't, anyway, it was a miniseries, and this is one of the characters that he uh, put in the, the, the movie, was yeah. this Scotty Bowers, and showed how kind of all, now, his version of Hollywood, of course, was uh, fictionalized. Right. Because he made it so... You know, black people were treated well and mm, mm, could win mm, Oscars. Mm. And you know. it's Ryan Murphy, of course he does. It's Ryan Murphy. He's like he so. Could, the gay people lived happily ever after, um, and the black people lived sorry, happily ever after. He created an entire show, and the entire cast was like queer people of color. Oh, so, and most of them are right. trans women. So. Right, 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 right. Not trans. But I just found that to be super interesting. Yeah. Well, so they say, and this is going to go back into like history, like ancient history, but they say that prostitution is described as like the world's oldest profession. But it would come that in. That is like, how everyone says that. But it probably is true. It would just come in forth to like farming and hunting and being a shepherd <laughs> and then selling your body. Um, but I mean, the ancient Near East, so like Greeks had temples slash brothels where they would go yeah. and worship and have orgy. It was seen as it was like sacred. Rome famously had brothels. Rome did. Uh, Sumeria, there's text and like ancient carvings that go back 2400 years or 2400 BCE. Um, that the ones that they can find of brothels, um, the Canaanites also all about it, all about the sex work. Um, it's in the Bible for Christ's sake. (laughs) Right. Um, I don't know. It's all throughout everything. And it wasn't until the middle ages where it was then deemed, um, it was common in urban areas. And then once the 16th century hit, then it was like deemed a sin. And then with like church. And, you know, the dark ages of, like, having the plague. <laughs> um, prostitution had dipped a lot. But it was seen then as, like, punishable by death. Oh. And so prostitutes were, like, in, 
murdered or in prison for a long time. But then, yeah, there's still countries where it is, like, legalized or decriminalized. And like I, we talked about before, is that there is a difference between decriminalizing and legalizing. And we don't want tech, we don't want it to be so legalized. Explain that. So legalizing sex work would create laws, codes, and regulations. So it's regulating sex work, right? And um, specific to the sex industry. And so people who buy or sell sex outside of those laws or regulations would be would be breaking the law and could be subject to arrest. Right. Um, so decriminalizing it is means like um, that consenting adults who buy or sell sex are not committing a crime. So it's it's like what Oregon did with like um, a lot of their drugs. Yeah. They decriminalized it, so they didn't create. They didn't legalize it, so they didn't create more laws and codes and structures and regulations. They're not, so they're not regulating the drug buying and, and taking of hardcore, like more intense drugs, I guess. Um, but they decriminalize it. So if you have it, or if you're caught with it, or if they, you're smoking it or using it, we're right. not going to get in trouble. Well, that makes sense. Right. And so that's what you want, because in Holland, in the Netherlands, you know, there's the famous red light district. Yes, absolutely. Sex work is legal, but sex work is legal with stipulations, and it has to be, like, in a brothel, but then sometimes that gets shady, and, like, you live there often, yeah. and, like, you're not, you don't always have funding if you needed to get out, or, like, you're subject to um, abuses. You know what I mean? Right. Like. You. One of the things I found interesting about uh, Amsterdam mm-hmm. is that the women, a lot of the women, have little storefronts, right? And they literally sit in kind of like the storefront window, yeah. And then, you know, and they have their little little room or little whatever, and you go in. And, but it's like if they're in the window, mm-hmm. they're available. If they're not in the window, yeah. not available. Nor yeah, right. And I was like, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, know? and that ties into to like sex slavery. Right? And, like, the sex trade. That is scary and different. Um, And that's why a lot of people are up in arms about um, sex work in general. It's because they equate it with, like, sex slavery or the selling of people into the sex trade. And that's not what it is. That's not considered sex work. Being sold into sex slavery is considered sex slavery. It's not considered sex work. Right. Right. And so... I think that it is an important topic and people should look more into it and be safe and take precautions and understand what's happening. But being a sex worker or making money off your body or sexual services is not the same. You're not, it doesn't mean that you're going to be sold into sex slavery. Right. You know? Right, right, right. But people, I remember during when COVID was at its height, there were a lot of people who were like, we should care more about sex slavery or the selling of children or whatever it is. Uh, save the children, that whole human campaign. trafficking. Yeah, right. human trafficking. Then we should care about COVID. And I remember, like, what? You know what I mean? Like, well, but that's also one of the things where the right wing people have to uh, have um, co opted the term "save the children" yeah. to mean like all of these people, all of these practices, all these things are harmful to children. It's like yeah. they're not. No, and it's like, uh, but it's just, it's just like the whole the gay community, the whatever community, the sex working community, all of these people, it's like, none of them want anything to do with children. So, it's human trafficking, which is a whole different yes. ball game. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the things. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about, because I just, I, when I went to Alaska, mm-hmm. uh, one of the things I learned was during the gold rush times, that prostitution was quite common that these women would go live in houses Mm -hmm. and work as sex workers and one of the things I thought was really funny is on their taxes they all said that they were seamstresses Mm. and so every house had to have at least one sewing machine usually more than that because if you have a bunch of girls they're not Mm going to have one sewing machine Mm -hmm. right so they would have a room that usually was probably full full of dust Mm -hmm. that was just sewing machines and one of the places we went that was a museum uh, was this uh, sex worker her name was Dolly Mm -hmm. who right at the beginning of the gold rush went to Alaska because she knew that their the female to male ratio was at that point it was like one woman for every ten men I believe it was and so her business would be booming. Yeah. So this woman, and she was not a tiny woman. She was a rather uh, Rubenesque woman. Yeah. Bought herself a house, and a little, just a little cute house. Yeah. Like you do. Paid it off within the first year. Like you do. Because she was that successful. 
But she wasn't just selling sex. She was selling alcohol and she was selling, mm-hmm. you know, visiting and playing cards and doing all the things that they were, you know, these so these men could socialize outside of panning for gold yeah. or doing whatever they were doing. And uh, even when the alcohol and stuff was made to be illegal during Prohibition, uh, yeah. she had boats of alcohol that would come up underneath her house. I'm about and it. And they had a little trap door in the floor Hell where they yeah. would deliver the alcohol. Hell and yeah. uh yeah. And she built a like a urinal into one of her walls. Yeah. So it was just this and it's still there. It's this metal thing and with a pipe that just goes straight down to the river. Mm-hmm. So you're just basically pissing in the river. Hell but yeah. it's like cause she only had I think she had like one bathroom in this house. Yeah. So when all these men were drinking Go yeah. have somewhere to pee. There you go. And she didn't want them falling off of the Makes the sense. thing into the river. Right. Yeah, back porch. Well, but she, she ran that house and was the only sex worker in her house. Holy shit. And worked quite successfully up into her 50s. Wow. And then she retired and whatever. pretty penny, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. of the things I thought was super funny that I loved when I went through her house was that her bathroom, the shower curtain, was all decorated with these flowers. Mm-hmm. But the flowers that that she had made and she made them all herself were made of condoms Mm. because this woman realized uh, the even at the time it was which was really early in the 1900s that condoms were worthless because the condoms then were made of sheepskin yeah and which is a barrier for nothing yeah right they're porous and she's like this is not gonna work and so she used them for decor i love that (laughs) hell yeah yeah but i found that super fascinating yeah i think it's always so weird that people have demonized it so much like It is just, like, the hidden secret of the world. You know what I mean? How many people frequent sex work? And that's the other thing. How... Oh, I didn't even add to the list of sex work. Doing porn. (laughs) Like, being a porn star, like, is sex work, right? And so why do people so... So many people demonize it, yet there's how many people... The popularity of porn. Well, but... how? And then, yeah, you have all these people going, oh, this is terrible. Yeah, I bet you probably have some or watch some Right, but, like, why why is all this... When there's, like, everyone probably watches it or participates in it or has paid for... You know what I mean? Like, why? It's so interesting to me. It's just, like, self-shame. You know what I mean? It's, like, this self-loathing. Well, it is, I think, also part of uh, at least the European culture to be so ashamed of sex and your body. I mean, I guess the Netherlands is Europe. Oh. That is true. And like that, so I don't know if it's a net, I think it's like America. America's weird. America's se- like sex is everywhere. We sell it. That's true sells. because, you know, I think about in England, mm-hmm. like they can show a lot more on television than we right. can. Yeah. And they are a lot. So yeah, I think there are beaches in Europe that are like completely nude. Yeah. There yeah. There are a few here, but I not mean, many. But, but America's weird because everything is sexualized. Every industry that's here is like hyper-sexualized, right? Everything is sex. Remember when like Jessica Simpson did like Carl's Jr. ads or whatever and yes. was like rolling all over a car with like eating a hamburger? Like what is happening? Right. And the stuff is like dripping down. Yeah. Her like, like, come on. It's a hamburger. Everything. Oh, and like uh, Garnier Fruit Teeth. Remember the the shampoo commercials where everyone's like moaning and Oh, God. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it's like it's shampoo, girl. Like I love getting my hair washed too, bitch. But like, calm down. Um, what is happening? Um, but yeah, it's so funny to me that it's it is like, an odd dichotomy that is prudish. That it's a, such a prudish country, but at mm-hmm. the same time, sexualizes everything. Well, and like they do it to individual people, right? Being like, oh, you act, a- you're too much of a slut, or you're a prude, right? Like in everyone. So then the whole country becomes like you're too much, or you're not enough. And it is weird, like, sex sells, but no one wants to talk or look at it. <laughs> I don't get it at all. Well, and I think, I think that that's one of the things that has always really perplexed me, is that people are so, um, pen- so what's the word? Bent out of so, shame. But they get so weird about sex stuff, and about the body, and about all that stuff, and it's like, why? It's the most natural thing ever in the world. And they talk about it. Oh, hello, they talk about it in the Bible. Yeah. You know, and it's like, where do you think folks come from? And I know that somehow that ended up with the the folks who ended up coming to America for religious reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, saying how sex should really only be for procreation. Yeah. So what, you're only going to have sex the amount of times you have children? Yeah. Who does that? I mean... That's crazy. And weird. And first of all... You know, it's like you have these things built into you for pleasure. But bitch, they're having sex all the time. And here's why. is because their children were dying at such young ages. So they kept having children. Because like, 
think about that time too, you're gonna need someone to like help with the house, help with the farm, help with the whatever. Right. And so people had lots of children because children there was a high like infant mortality rate along with just child mortality rate lots of children make it to 10 or older they just died from disease from not enough food from whatever and so that's why people had a plethora of children and then but children for a long time weren't treated like children they were treated like little adults so they should be able to like know and do and act and behave and just be a little person opposed to a child and now we know that isn't how the brain works but yeah it's crazy but at the same time one of the things that people do that I think is gross is, you know, when people, and people are so like weird about sex, but at the same time, they will say really odd sexualizing things about little children. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, he's going to be a heartbreaker. Oh, weird, right? You gotta watch out. She's Mm going to be, you know, getting all the boys. It's like, she's five. She's a little baby. Yeah. You're gross. Mm. Or like, oh, that's her little boyfriend. Shut up. That's disgusting. These are children. You know, you don't need to be sexualizing little children. And then at the same time, you know, being such a prude and whatever about grown-up sex. Grown-ups. Yeah, Um, weird, right? It doesn't make any sense to me. No, Mm -hmm. none of it does. No. Um, Oh, and then, what did I say before? There was... Oh, 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 it was about selling your body in the military, right? And how this is like my little radical comment about sex work, because I don't think that sex work is worse than joining the military. I think that when you join the military, you're selling your body to the government, and they're using you as a pawn in their... You know what I mean? In their warfare. Yeah. Um, I don't think sex work is worse than that. I would probably vote that higher. You could actively die being in the military. Well, yeah, and the likelihood is fairly large. And one of the things I know that you had mentioned before is... That being in the military, uh, it isn't just about you could die. Mm-hmm. It can really fuck with your brain. Mm-hmm. And you and so many people who've been in the military end up with such severe issues. Physical, uh, mental, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, which... Now, not that you can't get things from sex work. Of course you, you can. can. Of course. Yeah. And that was one of the things I wanted to bring up is that um, so often, um, trans women specifically feel like their only option is sex Mm -hmm. work because so many uh, businesses, corporations, like that kind of thing, don't, they don't want to hire trans women. Right. And so trans women, specifically black trans women Mm -hmm. are uh, targeted and like just in the year 2020, Mm -hmm. 37 trans uh, sex workers were murdered. That's a lot. That's a lot. And that's not just all of the trans people killed that, just, just the, the trans sex workers. sex workers. And those are just the ones and that you most know most of them black. Well, that's... Well, right. That's the ones whose bodies showed up somewhere and they mm-hmm. were reported, you know. But that is one of the... And again, if it were not... Yeah. If it were legalized or if it were decriminalized... Yeah. Then that wouldn't be such a thing. Right. You know, exactly. Because then you could also... These women would be more likely to report... Yeah, because... When something had gone awry or when some... Uh, a John... Yeah. Knocks out of pocket. Well, and that's the thing, too, is if, if we legalize things like that, that just gives law enforcement more power. And giving them more power over things like sex work yeah, or bad. drug criminalization is bad. Um, something I think that is important to talk about in this episode is consent, considering we're talking about sex work and what that means... Because because someone's a sex worker, and that whole list of people that I listed before are sex workers, does not give you the right to touch them or behave in certain ways that are uncomfortable or threatening or, you know, you don't get to treat sex workers differently than you get to treat other people because of their profession. Right. Because of what they do. And so with consent, there's something that Planned Parenthood created that's really nice. It's easy to remember, which I don't know why you need this to remember, but... If you think of fries, like french fries, and it's about consent, so consent should be freely given. It's reversible, so consent isn't constant. It can be taken away. Um, it's informed, so it's not like they're not, you know, drunk or under the influence of anything. It's enthusiastic, so they want to participate in this activity with you, and it's specific about what you're doing, right? But further than that, that's like sexual in between adults or whoever has sex sexy consent but consent in general is people more and more understand it but I think we should start instilling this into the in children and people like you know oh go give so and so a hug or kiss or sit on their lap or whatever 
I don't think that should be a mandatory thing. No. You shouldn't make children. You shouldn't make little human beings do things that they don't want to do because that person is family. I don't. We don't even do that with our kids towards us. It's mm-hmm. like we've been telling them since they were babies. If you don't want to hug someone or kiss someone or anything, you don't have to, including us. If I say, hey, come here, give me a hug, and you're like, I don't feel like it today. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to love that, but I'm going to respect that. Yeah. You know, and we have been telling them that all along. And so, you know, the whole no means no. And uh, now having rambunctious teenagers, when my son wants to, like, climb all over his sister and roughhouse with her, and she's like, no, 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 get off me. Don't touch me. It's like, I realize you're playing. Mm -hmm. She don't want to play. Mm Mm-hmm. Leave her be. Yep. You know, don't touch her. Don't touch her stuff. Leave her alone. Yep. You know, but consent needs to be across the board yep. for all things. And yes, if you start telling children at a young age, you don't have to hug your uncle, who's probably a creep anyway. <laughs> and you don't have to go kiss someone or whatever because they're family. They are going to go, oh, this is my decision because it's my body. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to a more important decision, maybe where someone is pressuring them, they will right. be like, oh, yeah, I don't have to do this. Um, I'm yes. comfortable saying no. Right. And so talking about what consent is, I want to also touch on what consent isn't. Because I feel like there is sometimes, you read it in news media or like Brock Turner, who raped the girl behind the dumpster. You know, all the things where people behave in certain ways that are detrimental to other people's mm-hmm. bodies. So consent is not flirting. If someone is flirting with you, it does not mean they're consenting for you to touch them or have sex with them. Same thing with silence. Silence is not a yes. Dressing sexy. And this I will scream from the top of my lungs for the rest of my life. Because because of how whatever you look like or whatever I'm wearing, this is not consent to be touched or sexually harassed. Um, the absence of no. So just because they haven't said no fiercely and directly. Is not yes. Is not yes. Um, being in a relationship. And I want you to know that I've heard this from men before who have said like, oh, you can't rape your wife or you can't rape your girlfriend. And I said, what the fuck? Like, of you, course you can. You think that you can just take sex or take the body of your person whenever you want to without their consent? Like, that's weird and uncomfortable and that should freak you the fuck out. If someone says that to you, get out. Um, right. That is a gigantic red flag. Run. Right. Um, accepting a ride or a drink from somebody is not consent. Um, if you have to convince somebody... No, you've just coerced somebody into having sex with you, and it's weird. Don't. That's gross. Um, if you had sex with somebody before, is not consent to have sex with them again. Does that make sense? Um, saying yes while under the influence of drug or alcohol. And yeah. So, look, there. here's the thing. If you want to sleep with someone, you should probably just communicate with them. Um, but communication is hard. Right. Or... If someone says yes or gives in because they were too pressured or too afraid to say no, you're an asshole and that's not fucking consent. Um, And so consent is also not a free pass. Just because someone consents having sex with you, they can take it away at any given moment. Right. They can tell you that they didn't consent to certain things. You know what I mean? Like, if you're having sexy time and you decide you want to try something and they don't want to, that means no. You know? And so I think it's important to understand if you go to a, and people should know this at this point, you go to a strip club, you don't touch the strippers. No. You go anywhere where someone, if you go out to a club or a bar or a party and you see someone who is dressed scandalously, you don't get to touch them. You don't get to just touch people because of what they're dressed like, what they look like, how they flirt with you. So I think, um, let that sink in. Consent is yes, and it's excited about it. <laughs> right. It's an enthusiastic yes. Hell yeah. Well, well, that makes sense. And I think the that if we start, you know, like you were saying, if we start very, very, very young yeah. with that and make it about everything, mm-hmm. that when it comes to those important decisions, it's like I've always said, if you teach children how to make decisions, when it's time to make important ones, mm-hmm. they'll be so practiced at it. Uh, one of my examples was... Letting children choose, like, what they wear, mm. how they do their hair. Yeah. Uh, I've had so many clients, you know, who, because I do hair, who will say, well, no, I'm not going to let my children do this or that to their hair. And it's like, it's just hair. And it's theirs. It's part of their body. Yeah. They should be allowed. I mean, if it costs a lot of money, obviously, you know, you don't have to pay for it. No. But you can also just say, well, it's your hair. If you want to do this crazy thing, you earn the money. You can pay for it. Right. But it's like, if you start letting them have those easy decisions, 
then when it comes to time for harder decisions, they will be practiced at it. And you know, there's an easy... Had Britney Spears' parents allowed her to make any decisions in her I young know. years, it wouldn't have been such a challenge for her as she got older. I know. Well, and I also think if it's an easy way to start teaching decision-making is, do you want this one or this one? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, give them the options to pick a thing. And then from then on, it'll be easier. But anyway, my point, I think, yeah, consent. Let them choose. Let them do their thing. Anyway. Well, and that seems like a solid place to yeah. dip out of here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, and so I'm sorry that we started on such a odd little note with me not doing anything right. This is our last podcast because I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> she quit. I know. But she'll be back next week. So. <laughs> I quit every week. <laughs> right. I'm actively quitting, but I then keep starting again. Mm. Uh, so if you would like to send us a message, Mm-mm. ask us questions... No suggest different things for us to talk about you may do that at it would seem as though at gmail.com and you can find us on most podcasting apps just download a podcasting app and search for it would seem as though yeah 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 it's not that hard it's not that hard it's not that difficult it's not that serious and uh we'll be back next week probably well we'll we'll see we'll see if we know how to fucking record next week I know. I'm bitter. I'm out of here. Bye. 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 It would seem as though.